everyone, and welcome to That Dog Training Show with Tanya Yarbrough, and that is me. And this is a show where we talk about the dogs we love and the stupid human behaviors we don't, also known as shubs. So, anyway, today is today's topic is... Um, the, I just forgot what to. No, I know what the topic is. I just didn't write down the actual title, so now I'm having a brain fart. All right. So today is about avoiding bites. So we got in. I had a very clever title on my Facebook page. You can follow on Facebook page when I get stupid like this uh, at That Dog Training Show with Tanya Yarbrough because it's probably a little clearer. Uh, than I am right now. A little too much sugar. I just sucked down in uh, York peppermint patty minis. Anyway. So um, I'm kind of basing this show on an article that uh, a client and friend of mine uh, put on Facebook, and it is called Three Signs a Dog is About to Dite, Bite, Dite, I don't know, <laughs> don't give me sugar, Three Signs a Dog is About to Bite, and The Five Things to Stop It by Dr. Becker. It was posted today on uh, May 20th, 2015, and um, so I'm going to kind of mostly focus on the uh, ways to stop having a dog biting you or your friends. Um, it's a big problem. It's apparently National Dog Bite Prevention Week, which to me means that should be every week, but it's a special occasion. I haven't heard of any parades or um, special cakes that are sold at Dairy Queen for this event, but um, so the focus is going to be on dog bites and how to avoid them. Um, it is estimated that there are about like 70 million dogs that live in family homes across the U.S. That's the estimation. It's kind of like the census. There's probably way more dogs than anyone's willing to admit. But um, millions of people every year, primarily children, are bitten. Um, and also elderly and the male carriers, which is uh, stereotypical but true. So... Um, Here's the steps that uh, Dr. Becker, who's a veterinarian, um, brought up on how to prevent your dog from becoming a biter. Um, one, she says to research the type of dog that might be best suited to your family and lifestyle before selecting a pet. A lot of times people uh, want a dog for a while and they go and they go to a shelter and then they see a dog to adopt and they feel sorry for it. It looks cute and they just get a hold of it. And there's not a lot of thought process about what's involved in adopting the dog or purchasing a dog, whichever the case may be. Um, not paying attention to the breeds and, and the types of things that is necessary to keep that dog in check and challenged and focused and well-trained. And so you have to be realistic about your lifestyle. There are dogs who do very well with having very little training and just sleep all day. <laughs> I mean, in terms of exercise, and there are dogs, a lot of dogs who just need a lot more, um, you know, focused energy placed on them in terms of getting them um, in good shape uh, behaviorally, mentally, all that sort of thing. So make sure that uh, you start off with a dog that you can handle, that fits your lifestyle, and be honest about it. Don't fall for just the cute dog, because they're technically all cute, you know, so just, you know, slow it down with the emotional reactions and actually think about it. That's number one. Um, number two, ensure that your dog is well socialized and trained to respond consistently to basic obedience commands like sit, stay, no, and come. Although I don't call no a basic command, I think correction sound would be more appropriate. But, um, Proper and ongoing socialization is the most important thing you need to reduce the risk of behavior problems, which is true. I, my dog Rambo, his biggest issues, other than having survived distemper, really the, the biggest issue is that he wasn't well socialized. And that is one of the most misused uh, phrases or words that people use when they talk about dogs. They want their dogs to be socialized. So oh, i got to socialize. i got to make sure. In fact, I've had people, you know, get all persnickety and angry and all that crap because I won't let them have their dog come into my dog's space while he's on the leash. You got to have him socialized, blah, blah, blah. They'll quote Caesar Milan, which I know they're misquoting him. So I'm not going to fault Caesar Milan. They're just a-holes. So um, they just think that socialization is about dogs just tackling each other every time they see a dog, which is complete bullshit and completely the opposite effect of what we want. That actually teaches dogs to be more aggressive. So um, so I went back and I kind of researched what Dr. Becker had to say about what socialization is for your puppy. Now, I'm going to start talking about what she says about puppies. Puppies 
are a little different than adult dogs. Small little puppies who aren't old enough to go out on a leash yet socialize differently than dogs who are now being leash trained. So for those of you who think it's all one and the same, your eight-year-old dog is not a puppy, not mentally, so you don't socialize them in the same freaking way you do a little puppy like I do Yonkers right now. And she's about to turn 14 weeks, so she's getting all growed up and stuff, so there's a higher expectation coming up real fast, um, i.e. leash walking. So, so let's go into socialization, because that's the number two way to prevent your dog from becoming a biter. Socialization it means, this is her definition, and I totally agree with her, socialization means exposing your puppy she's talking about puppies, to as many new people, animals, environments, and other stimuli as possible without overwhelming your puppy. Now that actually applies to adult dogs too, to a great degree, but you have to be more careful because adult dogs have already learned to be fearful of things, so it's much easier to overwhelm an adult dog in a lot of ways. So if they haven't been socialized properly, it's a lot harder to socialize an adult dog or an older dog. So let's get this down to the nuts and bolts. Socialization means exposing your dog to as many new people, animals, environments, and other stimuli as possible without overwhelming. That means it can't be too intense and it can't be for too long. So for instance, I socialize Yonkers by carrying her with me next to my smell or in a little purse or something that she that's really stinky and smells like me, which means it's stinky. Um, and while I'm walking the other dogs down the street, so she gets used to the noises of the city and she gets used to air breaks and she gets used to the smell of grass with pee on it without touching it. She gets used to cars whizzing by, bicycles, all that stuff. So she's actually really brave for a little puppy because I've taken her to a lot of little trips where she's not fully exposed exposed to the dangers of things, but she can smell things and hear things and see things. And she has the comfort of my smell and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, that's what they're talking about. When it comes to adult dogs on leash, you have to be even more careful about overstimulating, which means getting them too excited, or overwhelming them, which means getting them too afraid with stimulus as they're not ready, because they have a much stronger reaction to fight or flight than puppies do. So overstimulating even a young puppy can be can result in excessive fear withdrawal or avoidance behavior so um this is something that you know rambo never got the chance because he was always in a cage he didn't ex- get exposed to normal like sounds in a kitchen like just putting dishes in a sink freaked him out he actually pissed on himself and ran away so um you have to kind of um understand what socialization is well socialized dogs do not mean that they are ready to party every time they see a dog. That is completely wrong. So here's here's the, some of the things that if you have a puppy or an adult dog, no matter what, you need to actually help your dog get through this. One, they need to be handled from birth as best as possible, of course, if, or from the moment you have them, and learn to accept, teach them to accept touching of all the body parts, the ears, the paws, everything else. A lot of my socialization with Yonkers right now is teaching her to relax while I kind of, you know, hold her paws and push on them as if I'm going to clip her nails, but I'm not clipping her nails. I'm just holding them and she learns to fall asleep and then I touch another body part and she'll wake a little and then I'll just massage it until she falls asleep and then she kind of ignores it. So in a very relaxed state, she's learning that being touched is not a big deal. Now, another thing that is, uh, she brings up, uh, Dr. Recker brings up is exposed to as many people, other animals, places, and situations as possible. In other words, you want to include people in uniform. You want to include people of different ethnicities. You want to include people from like with different loudness and pitches in their tones and languages and uh, as much as possible. Other animals, like like in my case, I have cats in the house. I also have other dogs in the house. Uh, places, you know, not just the pet store, but also what does it sound like to walk down the street with her? Uh, going to she comes with me to training classes, um, that sort of thing. So she gets in the car a lot to go on car rides, and you know that sort of thing. So all those things are really really important for her to feel comfortable. I want to eventually travel with Yonkers and and be able to take her to seminars across the country that I will be speaking at. So I need her to be comfortable with hmm, hair plane sounds, hello, uh, and being comfortable being in the crate and all that sort of thing. So 
be aware of that uh, that kind of socialization. Encourage them to explore and investigate their environment. So I let Yonkers, after she's peed and pooped in the pen, to run around and figure things out and make mistakes and bump into the walls and all that sort of thing. If you're overprotective with your dog about touching things, you're going to teach them to be fearful. So you need to actually let them explore things. As long as they're not going to get physically hurt, let them touch your socks and then teach them to drop it. You know, don't freak out when they approach your socks to go grab them or something like that because they love to grab socks and stuff. I don't know, they like stinky shit. So then when it comes to um, your, uh, you also with your puppy or your dog, allow uh, to them to experience a variety of toys and games, surfaces and other stimuli. Different kinds of textures are really important. Stuff that they feel on their feet, stuff that they feel on their body, and stuff that they actually put in their mouth. It's really important that they ex- experience all those squeaky toys and rubber things and plush things. And that's why dog toys are made of these different types of materials so that your dogs get used to all kinds of experiences. And then learning to step on them and fall over them and all all that stuff and not freak out. Moving from carpet to hardwood. If you don't have hardwood or carpet in your place, find some place where they, they can land on it and get used to it. Um, uh, also, um, bring along in car rides into new environments. So uh, one thing I did with Rambo was he was afraid of people and uh, got a little aggressive with people. I got to go, one of the few restaurants I can go to is In-N-Out. So I would go to In-N-Out and I decided to roll down the window. You take the order when they, you know, when you're in line and he'd growl at them and I'd correct him. And then I would always order him a doggy burger and share some fries with him. So every time I was like, okay, let's go do this. Let's go do that. Here we go. Now we've got these fries. So each time he experienced this, he realized he was getting a, a, a burger and some fries out of the deal. And he started relaxing. And now he enjoys seeing someone come up to the window who wants to take my order, which is more comfortable for him actually than if we were just walking down the street and somebody wanted to meet him. So there's ways to socialize your dog to these experiences. If you're overly protective of them in new environments, then they learn to be fearful and they never get the experience that they need. It's also a nice challenge. I found that when I have a crazy little puppy who needs to be knocked out, all I have to do is carry her in her purse and walk the dogs and she is wiped out just from watching all the street traffic and everything. And then I get a good four hours to get the stuff done without chasing her around. So um, socialization is not not tackling with other dogs. It's about desensitizing in a lot of ways the experience of just the human world. Um, So remember to like expose them to different sights and sounds and smells of your daily life. Get them used to. I even had Yonkers in my little purse while I was washing dishes and cooking and she was tired but she didn't want to go to bed and sleep so she kind of fell asleep watching me do all this stuff so she saw what it's what I was doing when I was you know dropping stuff in the sink and that sort of stuff and now she's not afraid of those things um so um make sure that you've got you know uh a full understanding of what socialization means and really really listen i.e pay attention to what your dog is telling you when it comes to their fear reactions or when they feel like they're overwhelmed or it seems like they are doing great and all of a sudden they're kind of shutting down or getting snippy um, that means that they're overtired. So you need to end it pretty soon in terms of the stimulation. So be really, really gentle and careful, but not overprotective. That that really causes a lot of problems for dogs that I, I end up having to help owners with. And dogs who become anxious at a very young age is really hard. I mean, like years of work to get undo that. So that was number two, right? Number one, pick the right kind of dog for you. Number two, you want to make sure that your dog is well socialized. This is all to prevent your dog from becoming a biter, an a-hole, a fearful little a-hole. All right, number three, provide your dog with plenty of opportunities to exercise. And let me explain this for you because this is also a big, big you know, misnomer, misunderstanding.